I just woke up, coffee, and cadding. Today we're going to cad a little bit together, and the reason for that is easily seen in the Marble Machine X PBS product breakdown structure. This list is the description of the whole Marble Machine X, and this data is being imported into this analytics. And in this analytics, if you look closely down here, 3% of the assemblies are ready to be assembled. That's not enough for me to make a good video for you. So I'm going to attack here. Design in progress. 9% of the designs must be finalized. That's what we're going to do today. The top is 92% done, the mid is 92% done, the instruments are 21% done. You can see that because in the main model the instruments are mainly placeholders, whereas for example the top up here is almost completely designed. These levers are the levers I can use to play manually on the Marble Machine X and I got the ID to differentiate the notes I could see in the darkness of a live concert what note is which by using white and black ball and knobs and that creates a kind of a piano pattern so this is B, E, D, no A and D of the vibraphone here comes the four drums and here comes the four bass strings so today we are going to take a look at this the belt tensioning pulley here new design Hashtag 1-F-O-O-O-O Belt Tension Pulley First step, new component Hashtag 1-F-O-0-0-1 Belt Tension Shaft And we can create a sketch 10 Now we are going to decide the length of the pulley shaft And that is going to be one bearing, 14 millimeters Plus one bearing, 14 millimeters one shaft holder four millimeter plus the other side four millimeter that's the length of the shaft by closing up this we can create a revolve choosing this axis so that's our shaft but since we want to have threads in the end of this shaft i can go back and i can alter the sketch so this point is coincident with this line you see this line is blue still we have to constrain this distance. Let's say I want to use M8 and a through hole for M8 tap is 6.3 millimeters. Half of that, I don't need to know what half of that is. 6.3 divided by two is the distance for our line. And then I can go back down in the timeline and edit the revolve feature. I can deselect these parts. So now this is a perfect hole and our shaft is actually done. So now we're going to insert the bearings and I have made a custom library of hardware placeholders. So here, hashtag 620 bearings. I just inserted this bearing and here I want to show you something that can be very, very useful. To keep the timeline short without any move commands, when you're inserting an object, you have a one-time transform for free in Fusion 360 as Jeff Strater, one of the programmer of Fusion 360, have taught me. Be sure to use this state wisely. And in this move command here, when you insert, you can change between move types. So I can use this move type and I can move it around, but I'm not, clo I'm not clicking OK yet. I'm just moving around and I can do whatever. So now I want to turn the bearing 90 degrees like this. And now I want to sync it to this shaft so it's concentric. Then I take a point to point command. I choose the origin point is selected and I want to go there. Boom, the bearing is concentric with the shaft. I know I want it four millimeter in. I can just go like this and type in minus four. And then I hit enter. So first when the bearing is in place, I hit enter. And this part is inserted with no other timeline features. Copy paste minus 14 millimeter, boom, that's our bearings. New component, two millimeter spacer. Now I have to choose a sketch plane. And normally I can just choose the sketch plane of the bearing, but a good practice is to make your own offset planes. So you have less dependencies between the parts. By creating an offset plane, the sketch of the new component is not dependent on the bearing being there. So if I remove the bearing, the timeline doesn't break. On this new plane, I create a sketch and I project. And right away I can show you something else I recently learned. Because normally, 
when you project something, we can isolate our sketch to just see these lines. You see the lines are purple. I can show you if I go out of here and I delete this bearing. This feature is referenced by other features in the timeline. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes, the sketch is breaking, it turns yellow because it's missing the bearing, right? So you can fix this by hitting the yellow line and deleting this projection link. Already in this sketch, you can do the same. You can delete the projection link like this. And then if I stop the sketch and I delete the bearing, it doesn't complain because these sketch lines are not linked to the bearing anymore. But recently I discovered that there's an even simpler way. And I choose P for project here, projection link. I'm not sure if this is a new feature because I really didn't discover it until like two days ago. If you unclick that and if you choose these lines, it will make blue independent lines right away and you can delete any feature to keep your timelines clean. This is our spacer block. It's going to be two millimeter thick. So I'm making an extrusion on two millimeter and hitting OK. And we want two of them. And here you can see the point to point command is so lovely. I choose this ring, I choose this ring and it's exactly in place. Right now I'm discovering that I made a mistake on the length of the shaft, it's too short. But thanks to this parametric modeling, we can fix that very easy. So if we go back to the first sketch, this one, if I activate that one, so I hit in 40 or plus four, two millimeters. This is coincident with this. And now if I stop the sketch, the shaft is already longer. So you can see, I didn't make a new sketch. I didn't make a new extrusion. I just went back and edited the same sketch. New component, 1FO003, create a sketch. Projection link is unchecked. I want this point, I want this point. And now we're gonna try to make a crowned pulley. I'm completely out of my water here. I have no clue about radiuses or anything. Offset 28 millimeters. 300 millimeter diameter circle. And then I can say that the circle is coincident with you and the circle is coincident with you. And then we have our crowning here. That's one way to do it. I think a nicer way to do it is to use an arc. So now I can make a center point arc from that radius like this. We can create a revolve. So we're revolving this on the green axis. So that's our crowned pulley. So I'm such a plywood person. To me, this looks so thin. Let's make it one millimeter more. So since the sketch is constrained, everything just followed. And now this is a little bit thicker. New component. So this time I always want the holder to be against the spacer. So I'm creating the sketch on the plane of this spacer because I always want them connected. So if the spacer thickness moves, this holder is going to move as well. Now I can draw a line like this and I can say that I want this sketch line to be tangent to the projected line. So now this line is tangent, but I don't need it that long. So I can say that this point should be coincident to this and then I have a clean thing. So I can mirror this by the sketch command I mirror these two lines over that line. Let's extrude this just to see how it feels. Four millimeters. Let's move on over to the other side, point to point again, my savior, my hero, the point to point command. Then we're gonna do a new component, 005, holder wall, bad names, doesn't matter because we have the PBS number, I don't care so much about part names. Create a sketch on this, gonna project the whole thing, leave the projection link on, but we're gonna make this a through hole for M8 bolt, which is nine millimeters. Boom, 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 extrude this two millimeters. And the part is already done. So when I get these parts, I can just put them together and I can weld this line here without using any filler. And those welds look always great because they're so easy. Put the point to point command, boom, boom. I love that. So if I think there's a little bit too much air here, I can go back to the first sketch and I can constrain this line. I can hit 30, everything follows. I click stop sketch, all the parts are following. 
So you see even these parts and these parts are linked. So if I go in there and I write 4000, we have a very strange pulley. <laughs> so this is where you want these projection links still active because these outer parts will follow the design of the inner parts. Extruding that four millimeter M8 flat head bolt. So we can insert this into the current design. Again, you can see it's the wrong direction. I can just spin it to the correct direction. And again, the lovely point to point command. And immediately we realize that we of course need to make a nice countersink for that. I'm singing the A-Bomb 79 theme song. To get inspiration here. <laughs> gonna make this thicker. Just because the flat bar we're gonna weld to this is probably gonna be more something like eight millimeters. So it's nicer to weld the equal thickness. Change of plans. We're gonna change to an M6 bolt and I'm gonna have the outer wall be four millimeter thick and the inner holding the shaft be two millimeter thick just to get a nice, good countersink without clamping on the shaft itself. I can go back to the shaft sketch, the first one we made, and I can alter this 3.15 here. M6 tap drill size, five. We want to constrain this distance to five divided by two, 250. So now the bore is correct on the shaft. So we can roll back the timeline. We can change this feature to two millimeters. It's going to be four millimeter instead. And now our shaft is too long again. So we can go back and we can just hit 36 here. And we can just remove this and we can say that you are together with you. And boom, our shaft is the correct length again. And now I hope that we can get a nice chamfer that's going through the whole part. So here's another trick. So this screw is already inserted in the design here. I don't wanna move this screw. I just take the screw, I copy it, and then I'm just deleting the first screw. So that keeps the timeline clean from move commands. Belt tensioning pulley. Wow, I have no clue what you will think about this. To explain my design a little bit, this part, this part, this part, this part, this part is designed to be easily DXF cut. So let's save this and let's import it into our base here. Here's another safety feature. I'm adding acrylic or polycarbonate to all these wheels. So you should be unable to put your fingers through because the Marble Machine X is getting seriously dangerous. I don't want a tragedy around the machine and my next focus is safety actually. I was experimenting with this reddish appearance. Uh, we can make it darker so it's not so obvious. It's like when I was a kid I had a steam machine and those flywheels were always Oh, they were red on the inside and metal on the outside. Maybe that's the problem. Let's see if I can... Ah, oh, that looks better, actually. We can dull it down a little bit more. In the real world, if I can create a kind of rust tint on its faces, I would love that. So industrial. Procrastination. For now, this is done and we're going to describe what we just did in our PBS system. Belt tensioner shaft. The designed part, it's a manual machine part. We need one and it's designed. Now it's even ready to order. And I said, Chris send to a team. Then we have this two millimeter spacer, one F0002. The design part, it's a DXF cut part. We need two of those. It's ready to order, it's for Alex, the XF cut. Actually, we made progress on the Marvel Machine X. So I know you have a little bit allergic against cadding videos, but you have to realize, I have to explain something to you that this is where the Marvel Machine X is being built. 
this is the real work. Uh, we are manufacturing the pieces and we're putting them together, yes. And I'm trying to make as much videos as possible from that part of the process. But this is where I spend my time, plus making videos. Uh, this is really what I do. I sit and make decisions if this screw down here should be M6 or M8, this one. So that's where the bulk of my time invested in the project is going. And I just kind of want to ask you to try to wrap your head around the fact that this is actually where I'm building the machine. <laughs> so for me, this is super interesting. I know you want to see marbles rolling uh, by the help of gravity, me too, but there are some crazy cool things going on in CAD. Look at my new demagnetizer, doubled CNC acrylic blocks, PMMA pipes going to the fish there, CNC the acrylic blocks for the new conveyor belt. Here is the part this old Tony built for us. Yeah. There's a lot of cool things coming up here. Let's add something more. I have realized that we need cross bracing of the Marble Machine X. I, I knew it for a long time. You know when you build a tree house, you put all the planks like this. No matter how many planks you put or big nails, it will always start to lean in the end. You need that one diagonal plank. So now I can make a line that is constraint to this green line and constraint to this green line and then I can say that this line is going to be parallel with this line so if I change this, this angle 35 the other line will follow and then I can say that I want this to be 10 millimeters because I'm gonna use much smaller square tubing so by these constraints we have a very dynamic sketch it's nice mirror it over this line then we should be able to steer both sides yes and i want them to extrude symmetrically i want to extrude them from our sketch to both sides circular pattern from this component and i want to circle around this and if we do three it's quite spacey but of course we need four. So if I go into this sketch, I can still easily type in a new number. I can go out of the sketch and all these are changed immediately. Okay, so now to the real joy killer. So I'm going to make a diagonal from up here to down here. Plane at angle, thank you. Let's use pipe command or something. Can we make a square pipe in the pipe command? Yes. Thank you. Nice. Section size 20 millimeters. That doesn't look bad. New body. Look at that curves around. Look, from the vein angle, you don't see this. I want to mirror the diagonal. You know what? This is not so ugly. I thought I was going to hate this. But with the real design, we can we can hide it much more. Shoof, shoof. I always knew that there was a big chance that I was going to add these. So I know this is hurting in the eyes right now. Maybe I should move this point here over here. I can even build something here that holds it there. I want you to follow this one. Look at that, it's so much more less stupid. What's this futuristic mess I made? I kind of hate it, it's also kind of funny. Yeah, what did you make today? Yeah, I made a futuristic ugly spider web. That is an afterthought on my art piece. The Marvel Machine X is going to play tight music, you know, That's, that's that, that has to be worth something. But you can see how well they're hidden. It looks super strange without the programming wheel. Like, what are we doing? And then programming wheel, okay, cool. We recognize the Marble Machine X, no problem. And we're actually done. Yeah, that was a little cadding. I know you don't like it. <laughs> but as I said, this is where the Marble Machine X is built. 8% of the design must be finalized. 
So today we reduced the designs in progress by 1%. Every day I'm trying to get these numbers better and better and better, slowly but steadily. By the way, I have decided to keep these Wintergatan Wednesday videos crowdfunded. We have a Patreon and I never talked about it so much because I was a little bit uncertain about the whole Patreon thing. And recently I've been contacted with really high level sponsorships offers. I had a real struggle knowing how I should uh, think about this because if I would have said yes, my whole YouTube revenue would have been tenfolded. <laughs> So someone actually came to me and asked, do you want to get 10 times amount of paid for the same work as you do, kind of. And I decided in the end uh, to actually turn down these sponsor offers from really nice brands. And I respect everyone else who are doing ads inside their videos. But I want these Wednesday videos to be between you and me with no third part involved. The reason why I'm, I'm in a position where I can say no to someone asking me if I want to make 10 times as much money as I do is thanks to you, because I know you, you are so into the Marble Machine X and I know you are supporting the project by watching and you're gonna come to the concerts and I'm going to be completely fine. So I just wanted to say that I'm prouder than ever to have this channel crowdfunded so I'm less ashamed of telling you that we have a Patreon and that you're very welcome to support uh, my IDs on our Patreon or becoming a YouTube member here on the YouTube channel and if it would cause you any kind of financial stress you should absolutely not become a Wintergatan Patreon. Thank you so much, see you on the next Wintergatan Wednesdays.